Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and today's video lesson is on multiplying and dividing integers using models. Please make sure as you watch this video that you are taking good notes. Pause whenever you need to so that you can stay caught up with your note taking. Okay, so the type of models that we are going to be using, there's two types. One of them is going to be number lines. And then the second type of model that we're going to use is what we call integer chips. And down here, you can see these are examples of what integer chips are. They're just circular pieces. Um, usually, they're double-sided. One side is yellow, and the yellow represents positive integers. And the other side is red, which represents a negative integer. So each chip represents one integer. Yellow would be a positive. Red would be a negative. But there's also other models that you'll see that use what are considered integer chips but that aren't necessarily circular they could be different shapes triangular square shapes they could be different colors and you're usually given a key that explains what would be a positive integer and what would be a negative integer okay so let's go ahead and get started all right this is our first example example one and as you'll recall when you have a number outside of the parentheses next to the parentheses without any type of operational symbol in between, that operation means multiplication. So this means four times negative two. And going back to when we learned about multiplication in elementary, we, we learned that multiplication means repeated groups of. So this would be four groups of negative two. So if we go back, think about our integer chips, the negatives were red, so we want four groups, and in each group, we want two negative integer chips, two red chips. So it would look like this. You'll see that there are four groups, and inside each group, you have two negative chips. Then to get your answer, you just count them up. Two, four, six, there are eight chips, and they're all negative. So four times negative two would equal negative eight. Now, how would that look on a number line? Well, it would look like this. As you'll recall, using number lines to represent multiplication, you have what we call skips or hops or jumps. Those represent your groups. And you're always going to start at zero. So looking at this, you can see that there are actually four jumps or four skips, however you want to call it. So that represents the four groups. <clears throat> Excuse me. And each group, the size of each group, should be two negatives, two negative units. So because they are negative units, that means we're gonna go from the zero and we're gonna go to the left. Each hop or jump or skip will cover a distance of two negative units. So where did the first jump goes from zero to negative two, the second jump, two to negative four, then we have from negative four to six, and the fourth jump will go from negative six to negative eight. And that is your answer, negative eight, which is what we got with the number, with the integer chips. Okay, let's try the next one. This one is negative four times negative two. I know you're familiar with using the dot to represent multiplication instead of an X, same thing. This time, remember that the negative sign means the opposite of, okay? So this is really saying the opposite of four groups of negative two. Okay, groups cannot be negative. We still want our four groups, but we're gonna have to take the opposite of that negative two. And the opposite of a negative two is a positive two. So your integer chips, you're still gonna have your four groups, but instead of having two negatives inside, we want the opposite because of this negative right here. And the opposite of two negatives is two positive. So each group has two positives, count them up, two, four, six, eight, and your answer is a positive eight or just eight. So how is that gonna look on a number line? You're still going to model it the same way we did example one. We're still gonna show four groups. Each group is going to have negative two, but because it's the opposite, instead of our answer being negative eight, we're gonna do the opposite. And the opposite is going to be the same distance from zero, but on the other side. So instead of it being eight on the negative side, it turns into eight on the positive side. So you still get the same answer, positive eight. 
Okay, example three. Now we're going to talk about division, and this is negative 10 divided by 2. Remember, division represents splitting into groups or groups of. So this is negative 10 split into two groups. Remember, the second number, that's your divisor. That tells you how many groups that you want to have. So we have 10 negatives. 10 negative integer chips means we have 10 red chips, and we want to split them into two groups. So that's going to look like this. And our red has changed its color. It's more like a brick red now, but it's still red. We've taken those 10 negatives. We split them equally into 10 groups. Count one, two, three, four, five. Each group has five negatives. So negative 10 divided by two equals a negative five. And how does that look for the number line strategy, the number line model? Okay, this time, instead of starting at zero, like we do with multiplication, we start at our dividend at the total. We have 10 negatives, so we're gonna start at the 10 negatives. And we want to go to zero. And since we have two groups, we wanna make two equal jumps that will take us to zero. So each group would cover five negative units. So we get the same answer, negative 10, divided into two equal groups means that the size of each group is negative five. And example four, we have another division problem. We know that we can represent division using the fraction bar, putting it in fraction form, and it's read as negative 10 divided by negative two. This is the divisor on the bottom, so that would be the number of groups. But again, we don't want negative groups, we can't have negative groups, so we have to remember the negative sign represents the opposite, and the opposite of a negative 10 is what's going to be split into two groups. The opposite of a negative 10 is positive 10. So you take your 10 positives, split them into two equal groups, count them up. Each group has positive five or just five. And then the number line strategy when you look at it, you still have your two jumps, your two equal jumps of negative five, but we want the opposite of a negative five. And the opposite of a negative five is a positive five. So each jump represents the opposite of a negative five, which would be a positive five, which is the answer we got here. And that's all there is to modeling, multiplying, and dividing of integers. Good job, Bobcats.